Can I interject, please? Sorry. Um, I am a young black woman, soon to be professional. Um, and I happen to date a white male and probably will be marrying a white male. And when I was growing up, I was always taught to marry within the race. Um, that's something that I think that is pretty much generally ingrained in you. Um, and I think that when I got older and saw that my options were not uh, so great, it wasn't a conscious choice to choose someone outside of my race. It just sort of happened. And I think that in order for your solution, your proposed solution to work, black women sort of have to open themselves up a little bit. Of course, there are some um, cultural pressures to stay within your race, but they also have to be willing to look at other men of other races as attractive, as a viable option. And I think that a lot of black women are, resist that. Um, I remember growing up saying, oh, he's white, he can't be attractive. Like that's just, that's a conscious choice that we make. And I think that also, on the other hand, um, white males, Asian males, whoever, have to also be open to mm -hmm. dating um, black women. That's something that I think we've talked enough about in this conversation, is that a lot of black women feel that they are not attractive to other people besides uh, black males. And so that's another issue as well. That's a great issue. I agree on that. I'm not, no, I'm just saying a great issue. Um, I'm actually piggybacking that. My question was about that, the other side of this equation. Let's say that we get some miraculous, awesome shift where suddenly the culture's changed and black women get to be open to, to marrying outside the race. Who marries them? Because there's a shift that has to happen all over the place in order for that, in order for that move to work. And this, and this story that we're telling yet again puts the burden on the women. The burden's on the women in a way that I think is, is, is not the full picture of how this shift could happen. Uh, just the statistics on you know, who's open to who in a relationship are such that even when black women claim to be open to, to relationships or marrying, especially outside the race, it is hard. It, and it's, it's a question that happened at this book group. It's a question that, that happened back here. You know, Where are these guys? Where are these guys? Although a lot of the women at the book group also said that one, now that they're open, they can think back and realize this white guy that I thought was just being nice might have actually been flirting with me. So I think what she says about opening your mind is, is kind, of, kind of an answer. And I had, I had way too many stories like that to include in the book. So I'll just say that there, there, there actually is interest. We have what we might think of as a market failure here. And this book, is, this book is an effort it's, it's an effort to try to explain how the market operates so we can see what the sources of this market failure are. My question actually dovetails pretty well with this conversation. I was really interested to hear how you, you've witnessed this process of women, black women, reevaluating who they consider attractive and thinking more about, well, maybe interracial merit, maybe. And one thing that struck me when I read the book and suggesting interracial marriage as a solution was, you know, if we're talking about a numbers game here, why not suggest formal polygamy? Why not suggest lesbianism yeah. among black women? Yeah. So my suspicion is that currently, you know, current, current normative notions say that monogamy and heterosexuality, heterosexuality are natural. But miscegenation, quote unquote, was once thought of very unnatural too. So I wanted to get your take on why race is a more malleable barrier compared well, just, to gender and monogamy, and um, if there's any hope of changing that too in the future. Okay, do we, okay. We get the last Well, no, I'll just. We get the last issue. Okay, well, we go upstairs. Yeah, we can say more. I, but no, I'll just say briefly, the, um, I actually have a lot of people, when I do radio shows, I've had many people call in and suggest polygamy. Uh, but a woman has never suggested that, a man always has. Um, who knew, right? Um, Lots of black men suggest that, frankly, uh, it's in, in all seriousness. Lots of black men suggest that. Uh, but black women have, have not suggested that. Uh, and, uh, you know, lesbianism as well, right, might be a suggestion. Um, but, you know, most of the women that I talk to are, uh, and I did have a chapter, I'll just, I did have a chapter on same-sex relationships. That was an earlier version of the book. 
um, but then the chapter became too big, so it doesn't appear in this version. Uh, that may be a subsequent project as well. But most of the women I talked to actually did not express a desire. They expressed a desire for a man. Um, and again, I might have critiqued that desire, uh, but I do think that their, um, you know, the assumption that they're racial, part of the, the reason that black women are the most segregated group of people in our society, let me just emphasize that, in terms of their relationships, black women are by far, by far, the most segregated group of people in the society. And part of the reason for that doesn't actually have to do with their own desires, right? Part of it is their own desires, but part of it is a whole array of social pressures that lead black women to feel that if they open themselves to men of another race, they are abandoning black men, they are betraying the race, they are doing something that makes them feel quite simply shameful. I've talked to black women who are married to non-black men who don't want to put their partner's picture up in their office or don't want to put it on the internet. And this is the sort of stigma that shapes and controls people's lives in ways that we might just you know, imagine is about cultural norms and preferences, but it's not. Um, it's a way of limiting options in ways that, in fact, many of the women would prefer their options not be limited. Um, so, so that's the, the story there. And, and you know, part of the project of the book is, again, it's not, the, it's not an advice book. It's not meant to tell people what to do. I actually don't propose a solution. I don't say here's a solution. But I do want to say that I think black women deserve as much in their relationships as other women take for granted. Black women deserve to have the same quality of relationships as other women. And they should not be required to compromise what they want on account of the fact that black men are not doing as well. Um, to ask them to make that compromise is, again, to hold black women hostage to the deficiencies of black men, and I don't think we should do that. This has been amazing, <laughs> um, mainly because, Rick, you've written, you really have written an amazingly thought-provoking and feeling-provoking book. It's been amazing because of these incredible commentators. Um, Sandy, thank you for your skillful moderations and your own contributions to everyone who made a contribution. Um, I want to tell everyone you are all welcome to join us and carry on this conversation with all of us, with one another. In, there's a reception in the vineyard room. You go up the stairs and then you'll see signs telling you to go down the other stairs. There will be books to buy. Um, and sign um, and uh, just thank everyone and join me in thanking our illustrious panel.